This is Pat's Two Cents, reminding you that God's into love. Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents with God's Church of Love every Saturday and every Tuesday. We are dealing with While on Lockdown. That is the name of this message. And I want to ask you, what are you doing while on lockdown? Watching your favorite program? Playing your favorite games? Talking to your favorite folks on the telephone or the internet? Texting, photo shooting, and all that stuff that we do? Or are you seeking to see what you can actually do to impact? the world while we are on lockdown. Now, I want to share this with you. I'm going to talk about three people. John, Joshua, Paul and Silas. Actually four, but Paul and Silas were together. So it's three situations. Now, some of you have gifts. You have creative gifts. Before I get into the word, I want to throw this at you real quick. Some of you have creative gifts, and you can sit down, you can write a book in two hours. You can write a book in a week. You can do artistic work. You can do all kind of creative artwork and all all kind of expressions. Ask God to download some expressions he'd like you to communicate for this day and age, for a time like this as they call such a time as this. Now, some of you are able to to do mechanical maneuvers. You have a genius mind and, you know, like an engineer, and you can come up with all kind of crafty, witty inventions that can change the face of the world if you take the time to seek God's face now when he can download all kind of ideas to you. That would not only change everybody else's life, but yours too. Because he does give us the power to get wealth. All right. Now, the other thing you have to think about. Some of you are gifted in dreams, visions, prophecy, speaking the word, singing songs of worship and praise. What are you doing with those gifts? How are you applying those gifts to what's happening right now. Now let's talk about these men. And this is not just aimed at men. You can look at me and tell. All right. This is for everybody. Man, woman, boy, and girl. Grandma, grandpa, and relic. Whatever you call yourself, the bottom line is there's something God can have for you to do to impact this world now. Now, Davina was talking earlier about how there are people who are prayer warriors. They just love to pray. They can pray all day and never get tired. That's a gift. Well, guess what? Now is the time for that gift. Think about it. You can pray things into existence and you can pray things out of existence. Hmm. All right. You can bind death and speak life. You do all kinds of stuff in prayer. Now, we're going to go to Revelations. Now, you know what happened in Revelations, don't you? For those of you who don't, let's talk about John. John was one of the disciples. He was exiled to the Isle of Patmos. When he was exiled to the Isle of Patmos, that was a form of lockdown. He was there doing time. And during his time on lockdown, what did God begin to do? Breathe on him revelations, visions, dreams, all kind of stuff. And he was the scribe that was assigned to write everything that God was showing him according to his instruction. And what he wasn't to share, he was forbade, he was forbidden to share. So 
My question to you, now you look at the book of Revelations, the impact that has made on our lives. It is still unfolding to this day, is it not? But what did he have to do? He had to be placed on lockdown in order for his attention to be focused on this very thing, on this very assignment that God had him there for. See, when the Bible says all things work together for good to them that love God and who are called according to his purpose, I've told you many, many times in the past, do not curse your darkness. Do not curse your solitude. Don't curse this experience. You have no idea the amazing treasures God can reveal to you now. Take advantage of it. Seek him. Ask him. Scratch and dig for it. Go after it with all your might. All right. Now you see the difference John made. But he had to be on lockdown for that to take place, did he not? Now I want you to check out Joseph. Hmm. Not jo yeah, Joseph in the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 40. What did Joseph do? I want you, well, first let me read Revelations because I want you to hear what was said here. Just a few verses. All right. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant, John, who bear record, he was the scribe, who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of his of this testimony and keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand. Mm. Now, it goes on all the stuff he started to write and all the stuff he started to see. Now we're going to move on. What's happening with you while you're in lockdown at your house? Are you getting any downloads from God like John did? Or are you busy watching the Brady Bunch? I know I had to reach way back to something silly. But anyway, Genesis chapter 40. <clears throat> now, I'm going to tell the story real quick for the sake of time. Remember I said all things work together for good to them that love God and who are called according to his purpose? I'm going to share this with you before I go any further. Joseph lost a lot. He lost 16 or 18 years of his life based on a lie, based on jealousy from his brothers who sold him into slavery out of jealousy for their father's love for him. Now I want to share this with you. Some of you are going to lose your home. It's no, it's, it's, it's no doubt about it. Some, I really hope as few as possible. Some of you are going to lose your family members to death to this coronavirus. Some of you are going to lose your businesses. Some, your jobs. Some, you're going to lose some abilities you used to have from the damage done from the sickness. Pray against it. But unfortunately, not everybody's going to get a divine healing. We already know that. Now, this is what I want to ask you. Are you going to curse your darkness? Or are you going to ask God what you are to do in the middle of it? For example, when I was in ICU at over 300 pounds worth of fluid, Drowning in my own fluids, them thinking I was going to die, God telling me I was not. I knew. I told my pastor, I'm here because God wants me to refurbish my body. He wants me to learn a whole different way of living, a whole different way of eating, a whole different way of everything. 
so that he can use me out of a healthy body. He can't use me now. I'm too weak and sick. But this is for a purpose. This is a means to an end, not the end. And I say to you, going through, this is a means to an end, not the end. Because God knows the plans he has for you. Help me, Lord. I ask you to anoint this word, Father. Please. God has a plan for you. He knows the thoughts he has towards you. Now, when God sets up the whole stage for your plan, it includes the mountaintops and the valleys. It includes the roads and the roadblocks. It includes the roadblocks and the detours. It includes the detours and the, the delays. The bottom line is God's in control, y'all. And he's going to get his purpose fulfilled. He is a God of purpose above and beyond everything else. Some of you will lose your marriages. Whatever you lose, it will be replaced by something much greater because it will fall into the line of God's purpose. That's when real fulfillment comes, real gratification comes, real satisfaction comes through fulfilling the purpose for which God brought you here. Now, Genesis chapter 40. Mm, mm, mm. Now this, I, I just want to read this, this one. Let's see, how far am I going to go here? All right. Now Joseph is in prison. And he's there with the baker and, you know, the, 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 the king's uh, servants. They're in prison too. Now, at this point, they both have dreams. And Joseph interprets their dreams. And he asked them, I'm just giving you a quick soliloquy. Um, he asked them to remember him. When they get freed, to remember him. Well, guess what? As God would have it, not the devil, who's the one we blame all the time. As God would have it, they forgot. Because it was not the fullness of time. See, God works within time parameters. He has a schedule to work out. Everything's about purpose with God. So now, of course, Joseph is disgusted, you know, broke, busted, disgusted, down, trodden, discouraged the whole nine yards. He feels forsaken. Well, he was, but not by God. And what happens? In the fullness of time, they find out that Pharaoh has a dream, a troubling dream. Mm. <laughs> yes. And when he has the troubling dream, they remember Joseph. Now, I'm just doing a quick summary for the sake of time. They remember Joseph. Move on to chapter 41. They remember Joseph, right? All right. And I'm going to read verse 1. And it came to pass at the end of two full years. Poor Joseph had to wait two years. Two full years that Pharaoh dreamed and beheld. He stood by the river. And behold, there came up out of the river seven well-favored kind, fat-fleshed, and they fed in a meadow. And behold, seven other kind came up after them out of the river, ill-favored and lean-fleshed, and stood by the other kind upon the brink of the river. And the ill oh, it's hard to say it, tongue-twisting. The ill-favored and lean-fleshed kind did eat up the seven well-favored and fat kind. So Pharaoh awoke, and he slept and dreamt the second time, and behold, seven ears of corn came up upon one stalk and rank and good. And behold, seven thin ears, and blasted with the east wind, sprung up after them. And the seven thin ears devoured the seven rank and full years. 
And Pharaoh awoke, and behold, it was a dream. And it came to pass in the morning that his spirit was troubled, and he sent and called for all the magicians of Egypt and all the wise men thereof. And Pharaoh told them his dream, but there was none that could interpret them unto Pharaoh. Then spake the chief butler, Oh, now Joseph comes to mind. Hmm, does that sound like a plan of God? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I love this story. Boy. Oh. It stops you from feeling forsaken by God. Mm, mm, mm. All right. So then spake the chief butler unto Pharaoh, saying, I do remember my faults this day. Pharaoh was wroth with his servants and put me in a ward in a captain of the guard's house, both me and the chief baker. And we dreamed a dream one night. And we dreamed a dream in one night. I and he, we dreamed each man according to the interpretation of his dream. And there was there with us a young man, an Hebrew, servant to the captain of the guard, and we told him, and he interpreted to us our dreams. To each man according to his dream he did interpret. And it came to pass as he interpreted to us, so it was, me he restored unto mine office, and him he hanged. Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph, and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon, and he shaved himself and changed his garment and came unto Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I have dreamed a dream, and there is none that can interpret it. And I have heard say of thee that thou canst understand a dream to interpret it. And Joseph answered Pharaoh, saying, It is not in me. See, he knew not to take credit. God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, In my dream, behold, I stood upon the bank of the river. Now, let me stop here real quick, real quick. What if Joseph had gotten a fat attitude like some of you? And said, shoo, them guys forgot me. I ain't saying jack to them. No, no, now they want my help, right? Mm-hmm, yeah. No, nah, no, nah, forget it. I ain't interpreting Jack. Let him suffer. Let him ride. I know what it means, but I ain't telling. Mm -mm. Now, why? Bitterness will cause you to do that. Watch your heart. Don't complain. Don't get bitter. Don't get offended by God because he has not rescued you when you think he should have. It's his time clock, not yours. Think about that. All right. Now, listen to this. This is the blessing why he got forsaken for another two years. Because now was the time. For such a time as this was Joseph there. Now listen. <laughs> okay. And behold, there came out of the river seven kind, fat-fleshed, and well-favored, and they fed in a meadow. And behold, seven other kind came up after them, poor, ill-favored, and lean-fleshed, and I never saw in all the land of Egypt for badness. And the lean and the ill-favored kind did eat up the seven fat kind. All right. And when they had eaten them up, it could not be known what they had eaten, that they had eaten them. But they were still ill-favored as at the beginning. In other words, they weren't even satisfied after picking out. Now, so I awoke and I saw in my dream and behold, seven ears came up in one stalk, talking about the corn, full and good. And behold, seven ears withered, thin, and blasted with the east wind sprung up after them. And the thin ears devoured the seven good ears. And I told this unto the magicians, but there was none that could declare it to me. And Joseph said unto Pharaoh, here it is right here. The dream of Pharaoh is one. God hath shown Pharaoh what he is about to do. See, a lot of y'all want to blame all hardship on the devil. What did he say? God has shown Pharaoh what he is about to do, not the devil. The seven good kind are seven years. And the good ears, the seven good ears are seven years. The dream is one. In other words, both of them mean the exact same thing. And the seven thin and ill-favored kind that came up after them 
or seven years. And the seven empty ears blasted with the east wind shall be seven years of famine. This is the thing which I had spoken unto Pharaoh. What God is about to do, he showeth unto Pharaoh. Behold, there come seven years of great plenty throughout all the land, and there shall arise after them seven years of famine, and all the plenty shall be forgotten in the land of Egypt, and famine shall consume the land, and the plenty shall not be known in the land by reason of the famine following, for it shall be very grievous. And that's when Pharaoh promoted Joseph. Now I'm done reading on that, but I just want you to hear some of the details of how that happened. Because we look at the details of everything going wrong, everything going sour, everything going south, everything falling through, everything that's being lost. This man lost 16 years of his life, his young years, based on some stupid brother's jealousy. He didn't deserve that. He hadn't committed a crime. And then he's in there for X amount of years and then Potiphar, his wife, lies on him. And he, I mean, it just gets ridiculous. So now he goes from slavery to being an inmate for something he didn't even do. And you think God is not fair to you. You think life is not fair to you because you don't know the end of the story. It's what your attitude is as you go through this, who you're leaning on as you go through this. You don't lean on your fat attitude. You don't lean on, uh, uh, lean on your feisty lip. How well you can cuss a sucker out and ream him out and, 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 and chew him up and spit him out? No. Where's the grace to go through this thing with the right spirit? No complaining. No bickering. No whining. But praise and worship. Giving glory to God. Trusting in him. When you're wondering with tears what he's doing. And why? Now, here's another example. You go to the book of Acts. And in the book of Acts, we're looking at Acts chapter 16. In Acts chapter 16, Paul and Silas were doing what they were about their father's business. Were they not? Yes, they were. They were in the will of God. They were living a holy life. They were not committing sins. They were not half-stepping. They were not straddling the fence. They were not winking an eye to sin. They were walking the straight and narrow. And they get tossed in the prison for doing that. Hmm. Right. Now, we got a two-fold thing going on here. All right. Now, let's go on with what happened. All right. Let's go from verse 16. And it came to pass, as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us, which brought a master's much gain by soothsaying. <laughs> and you think God likes psychics, huh? Yeah, yeah, you think he likes all that soothsaying stuff, yeah. The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High, which show unto us the way of salvation. And this did she many days. But Paul, being grieved, turned, said to the Spirit, he didn't talk to the woman, he said to the Spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. And when her masters saw that the hope of their gains were gone, they caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace unto the rulers and brought them to the magistrate saying, these men being Jews do exceedingly trouble our city and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe being Romans. And the multitude rose up against them 
together. And the magistrates rent their clothes and commanded to beat them. Beat. Beat. Not kiss. Not hug. Not giving money. Beat them. How many of you could have handled that one? Where's God? Lord, where are you? They're about to tear my behind up. They're about to rake me over the coal. It's going to hurt, Lord. Come and rescue me. And where's God? Nowhere to be found, huh? Wow. Yeah, what would you have done? Curse God and die? Hmm. Think about it. Get prepared, baby. We moving into some weird times. And when they had laid many stripes upon them. That means they whooped their tails. They cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely, which means keep them secure, lock them up good and tight, who having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison. Oh, he made a real, he made a real point. Y'all ain't never getting out of here. Inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. Hmm. All right. And suddenly, now do you hear what they did? Were they crying? They might have a little bit from the pain. But what they did to express how their love and trust in God was they prayed and sang praises unto God. Not God, where are you? I'm sitting up here serving you and you know where to be found. What's up with that? I thought you said you'd never leave me or forsake me. Well, this crap hurts. I don't like it. This ain't fair. You shouldn't have let me be hurt. I do nothing wrong. <laughs> what did they do? Mm -hmm. They prayed and sang praises. Verse 25, read it for yourself. They sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. The prisoners, the other inmates heard them. Mm. They must have been singing mighty loud, y'all. And suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were open and everyone's band were loosed. Woo! And the keeper of the prison, awaking out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had bled. Mm. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm! For we are all here. They didn't even run as soon as it opened up. Then he called for a light. Check out that light. And sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? There's a soul won over just by that right there. And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved in thy house. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord and to all that were in his house. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. He took them the same hour of the night, washed their stripes, and was baptized. He and all his straightway. And when he had brought them into his house, he set meat before them and rejoiced, believing in God and all his house. Wow. Now, I'm going to stop right there. Look at what happened. Souls got saved. Households got changed. The inmates got to hear the gospel. Why? Because they weren't whining and complaining when the hardship hit. They weren't fussing, fuming, restless, and ir irritated, agitated, cussing folks out because their back was hurting, because their skin was split open from all those whips. No. No. How are you going through what you're going through? What's your attitude? You know the old expression. It's not scripture, but it should have been. <laughs> no offense. Um, and this, and the, the old adage goes, 
Your attitude determines your altitude. You're either going to fly high, baby, or you're going to stoop down real low based on how you handle oppositions, problems, trials, conflicts, challenges of life. How are you going to handle it? See, you have to remember no matter what you are going through, God is a God of purpose. He's working a purpose out one way or another through hook or crook. God's going to have his purpose worked out to fulfillment, to fruition. You may not know the plan, baby. There's an old song I used to sing. Out of the fire to the flames of another trial. When you think that your heart has had all it can take and nothing is there left to break. <laughs> In the heat of the fire, he will pull you through. When you don't understand it, he's tried and true. No matter the problem, God has an answer for you. Okay. I want you to ask God. This is the time to hunker down. Ask God what your purpose is for such a time as this. Ask God how he wants to use you. He may want to use you one way. He may want to use you multiple ways. He may want to use you in a myriad of ways. However, he wants to use you as Joseph did, as John did, as Paul and Silas did. Be available, readily available, even when your back's hurting. Even when your body is chewing you up, even when your money's funny and your change is strange, when your belly's rubbing up against itself out of hunger, ask God to show you how he is to use you. God, he said in his word, my grace is sufficient. So no matter what the thorn in your side is, no matter what the persistent problem is, never curse your darkness. It's always darkest before light. God does things in the dark that he cannot do in the light because certain things have to be done in the dark in order for it to function correctly. There are certain insects, certain, certain um, creatures, creepy crawly creatures, that do what they do. They germinate roots. They germinate seeds. They do all kinds. They, they, they fertilize the soil. All kinds of things are being done in the dark. So the darkness serves its purpose, y'all. It's not an oops by the Lord. No, the darkness serves its purpose. The earth was created out of darkness. The earth was without form. That means it had no form, no substance. Genesis 1, the earth was without form and void. And darkness was on the face of the deep. Mm. Look at that. Look at that. That's when all this creation took place in the dark, in the depths of darkness. Darkness serves its purpose, and God is a God of purpose, and God is in control. So seek him, pray to him, get in his word, ask him all kind of questions. Ask him for all kind of ideas. There will be folks right now that will be rich beyond their, their imagination because they took advantage of the situation. All things work together for the good to those that love God and are called according to his purpose. Some will get rich in finances. Some will get rich in the spirit. Some will get rich in power. Some will be rich in giftings and miracles. Doesn't matter. It's not a materialistic thing. However God chooses to bless you, be blessed. Not cursed, be blessed. God bless you as you go through the darkness.
and follow God to the light. Amen. May God's into love.